What's going on guys? I've got a real treat for you today. I'm gonna to be showing you how to install Gentoo on hardware. Now, I've done a few videos of Gentoo already. I've shown how to do the full installation in VirtualBox. I've done several configuration videos of Gentoo on real hardware because I do have Gentoo installed uh, to another one of my disks in this desktop, but I've never done a video actually showing the full installation process on hardware. So that's one thing we're going to see today. And another thing we're going to see today is that you actually don't need to install Gentoo from a Gentoo Live CD. You can do so from any Linux distributions Live CD or even an installed OS like I have here with Linux Mint. And the reason why, so with any of these minimal Linux distributions, whether we're talking about Gentoo or Arch Linux, during the setup, all you really need for the initial steps is something to partition your disk with, an internet connection, and a browser to download the Stage 3. In fact, you technically don't even need a browser to download the Stage 3. You could um, just do it with wget, uh, or you could wget the base, I believe is what they call the Stage 3 inside of Arch Linux. Um, so yeah couple of utilities, text editor, and that's pretty much it. So every Linux distribution that I know of has all of those utilities inside of it. Um, so yeah, if you want to install Gentoo, there's no reason to actually burn that live CD image uh, to a USB stick. You could just use whatever Linux you already have on it, Linux Mint in my case. Um, and yeah, if you're ever in the mood to install Gentoo or Arch Linux, you can just do what I'm going to do here. Well, this is for Gentoo, obviously. Steps for Arch are gonna be a little bit different. Uh, so now that we got that out of the way, first step is to make sure that we actually have a working internet connection. Um, Gentoo.org. <clears throat> All right, so that's three ping replies from Gentoo. So it looks like my internet is working correctly. Um, oh, and let's just go ahead and become root because pretty much everything we're gonna do here requires root. Okay, so first we want to see what disk we actually have in the system, especially if you have multiple ones like I do. And we want to identify which disk we're going to install Gentoo onto. So in my case, it's the Samsung 870, which is dev SDD. Now, if you have a file system on this disk already, you wanna go ahead and wipe it with the wipe FS a dev SDD command. And again, make sure that you're pointing this to the correct drive because if you wipe the wrong one, then, well, you're going to lose data. So go ahead and do that. And now we're going to enter parted. Okay, and let's go ahead and make label GPT. And let's change the unit to MIB. And let's make part primary one megabyte to three megabytes. And we'll name one grub set one BIOS grub on make part primary. And then we're going to go from three megabytes. So the, um, the first entry for each of these going to be the last entry that you used over here. So this one's gonna be three and then 131. So that gives us a total of 128 uh, megabytes for boot. And we're going to name to boot. And then we're going to make part primary 131 to 4227 which is just about four gigs, if I'm not mistaken. And this one is going to be 
swap. And then make part primary 4227 to minus one. And we're going to name for root file system. So this minus one, this is going to go from the fourth gigabyte all the way to the last gigabyte. So that's going to use the rest of my one terabyte Samsung SSD. All right, and then we can go ahead and print it out. So this is what your configuration should look like. Again, size may vary depending on what size disk you're having there. Um, for swap, there's, there's different, um, people recommend different things for swap. I'm just doing about four gigs. Um, I think the general rule of thumb is something like have it equal to however much RAM you have installed, or some people say double however much RAM you have installed. Uh, but like I said, four gigs is good enough for me. You can kind of play with this as you want. Um, the uh, grub part should be about two megs and the boot part should be around 128. Um, you could make this a little bit bigger. Like if you wanted to do five megs here, this could be a little bit bigger if you want 512, but again, it's not really necessary. All right, so we should be able to quit parted. Um, oh, I think it's actually just quit. Okay, and now we'll do an F disk on dev std. Uh, what? No, we want to do an lsblk. Yeah, there we go. So we can see that everything got written to that partition table. So now we want to start formatting the disk. So we'll mkfs fat f32 dev std2 and then we'll mkfs ext4 dev std4 and then we will mk swap dev std3 and then swap on dev std3 and now we're going to mount the root partition to a folder somewhere on the computer so I've already got one that's uh, pre-prepared so it's um just this one here, and I can actually just remove this network devices, because that's not necessary. But yeah, it's going to go into MNT Gen2. So you can create a folder with the same name or a similar name on your computer, if you don't have it already. So mount dev std4 MNT Gen2. And now if we CD to that directory, see that we have this lost and found in here, but this is where uh, we're going to download our stage three and then everything is going to be happening inside of this directory. If you're on a live CD, you might need to configure the date to make sure that it's up to date. If you're on an installed uh, OS like I am, then the date should automatically be set already. But just use the date command to make sure. And then um, if I did have to set it, then the format would be something like 1201. Um, and then the time, let's see, it has to be in 24 hour. 09 is 2101. 44 and then 2020. So now we want to download a stage three tarball. And this is one of the places where having or doing this from something like Linux Mint is more useful because you can just open up Firefox and select a stage three tarball. 
Of course, if you were doing this on the actual Gen 2 Minimal Live CD, then you would have to do this from Lynx, I believe is the browser that they give you there. Uh, so I'm gonna use a hardened stage three. So I can just copy the link location and then I should be able to wget and then just paste that in. And it's going to download, shouldn't take too long. All right, so now you have a stage three right there. This is the AMD 64 hardened. And now we want to unpack it. So we're going to do that with tar XP VF stage three, and then we can auto complete it. X adders include equals star dot star numeric owner all right so this is unpacked now and you can see that it just looks like a regular uh, Gen 2 root file system, except for this stage three there. You could delete that if you wanted to. Um, so now, in fact, I actually will go ahead and delete it. <laughs> uh, so now, here's another cool thing that we can do. Part of the configuration process for Gen 2 would be to configure things like your make.conf but that can be kind of time consuming. So I've got some pre-made files here that I'm going to just add into this Gen 2 installation. One of them is a make.conf and I'll show you what that looks like. So these are all of my settings. You can see the flags that I'm using here. Uh, MakeOps is automatically set to what it's gonna be for uh, my computer, so I've got eight threads, which is why I've got it set to J8. Uh, we've got some emerge options here, and we've got a whole bunch of use flags. Uh, we've got my video card already specified. We've got Gen 2 mirrors already specified. The Grub platform is already specified, so there's no need to actually have to deal with um, editing all of those things manually like we would if we were using a live CD. This is assuming that you have a make.conf already. Uh, if you don't, then you're going to have to make one. Um, I'll probably mention during the installation steps when you would have to go in and add things, but I'm most likely just going to skip those things because I've got it all here. So we'll just add all of these into the uh, Gen 2 folder. I think I have to open this as root. Yeah, because I have it mounted as root. Okay, so create a folder. Call this temp Gen 2. And hmm. So for some reason, my file manager just shit itself. Guess it didn't like being opened as root that way, but no problem. We still have the terminal. So we'll just cp home Kenny gen2 install into temp gen2. All right, so there we go. All the files are there. And we'll go ahead and copy this make.conf into Etsy. And I think that's the only thing that I really need to put in place for now. So if you didn't have the pre-made make.conf like I just had there, 
then you would want to uh, go ahead and create it. Oh, that's because I'm doing doing it that way. Uh, Etsy make.conf. So yeah, you would just want to go ahead and edit it. Um, you should have like a very basic one. I think by default, it comes with the common flags. Um, if not, obviously you just have to put it in. Uh, and then you have to put in your mirrors. And of course you want to set your makeups so that it can compile faster. So we'll just quit out of that. Um, now we need to make dir parents mnt. Um, let's see. Oh yeah, I'm already in Mount Gen two, so it's gonna be Etsy Portage repos .conf, and then copy from user share or USR share portage config repos.conf to Etsy portage repos.conf gentoo.conf and cp dereference Etsy resolve.conf to Etsy. Let's see, unrecognized option dereferences. Oh, yeah, it's just dereference. All right, there we go. So we're going to prepare to chur root now. Mount types, proc to from proc to proc mount r bind sys to sys mount make r slave sys Mount R bind dev to dev and mount make our slave dev. And then sure root MNT Gentoo bin bash source Etsy profile. All right, so now we are within that Gen 2 stage three. So now we're going to mount dev std to, to boot, and then a merge web r sync. Oh. So I already see one mistake that I made. I've got the layman stuff in there and it doesn't like that since we don't have layman yet. So let's go ahead and fix that. Um, let's see, nano. Yeah, because I don't have VI, right? Yeah, nano, Etsy, portage, make.conf. Oh, okay. I have my make.conf in the wrong location. So let's go ahead and fix that first. Okay, and then we'll nano into it. And let's see, where's the mention of layman? 
Here we go. So we'll just comment that out. And now it shouldn't complain when I do a web R sync. And this could take a little while, so I'm gonna pause the video while this web R sync runs. All right, actually didn't take that long. So here, let's clear. So now let's do an eselect profile list. And we want to select the profile that we're using. And it's actually already selected, so don't have to do anything there. Make sure that yours is selected, of course. Um, so now we're going to emerge a couple of things. Actually, first let's go ahead and update everything that we got on here. And also make sure that our base is compiled with the use flags that I have in make.conf because this is probably gonna change a few things. Yeah, so we got 64 upgrades. Um, this is definitely going to take a while. <laughs> so I'm gonna pause the video and come back in several minutes. All right, so the world set has updated. Uh, hopefully you had something else to do while this was updating because it does take a little while. Um, also, as a side note, you can adjust the portage niceness as well as the number of jobs that are running at the same time. If you want to continue using your computer to do something else like browse the internet, gaming, so on and so forth, just adjust those values to whatever they need to be to free up enough CPU threads to allow you to do that other stuff. Or you could just do something that's not on the computer like I was doing. So another thing that I'm gonna do here is I'm going to emerge them. This is not required, but I just prefer to use vim instead of nano when I'm editing things in here. Uh, so yeah, that's why I'm going to go ahead and install it. All right, so we've got Vim installed. Uh, also, as a side note, if you are installing Gentoo from the official live CD, you do have VI within the live CD, but you don't have access to it after you root. You can copy the binary of VI into that sure root environment, and then you'll have access to VI in there instead of nano. So another cool trick you can do. Uh, so now let's go ahead and update our time zone. Okay, and then we're going to emerge syslibs time zone data. And let's make sure that I'm on the right locale. I'm actually going to add the US locale. So vim into Etsy locale.gen and it's going to be en us dot utf 8 utf 8 and then I should be able to do a locale gen and so now a US shows up and we'll do eselect locale set four. All right, and now we're on the fourth one. And then update the environment. And 
And now we're going to install a few more applications. So we're going to do sys kernel gen2 sources and gen kernel. So gen kernel, you can actually use that to generate a kernel automatically. I'm not going to be doing that because honestly, that kind of defeats part of the purpose of using gen2. But I am going to use gen kernel to create an init ram fs. And of course, the uh, gen2 sources are the actual sources of the kernel. And this needs an unmasking. So we're going to do that. I think it can go here. Oh. Here we go. So I'll pause that while those compile. All right. So that's finished installing a couple more applications that we're going to need. Well, you might not need these depending on how your setup is going to go, but uh, they would be recommended. So like, for example, sys apps PCI utils is recommended if you're going to have any PCI devices at all in your system. So graphics card users, you're going to want that and merge app arch lzop and lz4 so these are going to be compression algorithms that i'll use for compressing my kernel if you're not using these uh, then you don't need them i think uh i think maybe bz2 or if you just don't do any kernel compression then you don't need to use any of these because BZ2 might be included by default in Gen2. Not 100% sure. Uh, oh, by the way, this Q flag that I'm adding, that just gives you a nicer output because uh, otherwise you're going to get output from your compiler and it really fills up your screen and just kind of makes things look ugly. Also, it might make your emerges a little bit faster since your computer's not spending any CPU time outputting all that nonsense to your screen. Oh, it actually wants me to specify LZ4. Okay, that's fine. Now it's time for the fun part, which is configuring the kernel. So you want to change to the Linux directory and do a make menu config. And now we can start adding in and taking out the options that we want and don't want. Um, I'm not gonna go too crazy with doing this here. So like I'll take out AMD MCE features cause I'm on an Intel CPU. And same thing with the microcode loading support. Don't need it for AMD. Probably just gonna go through this pretty quick. Okay, that looks good. That looks good. Uh, so this was the kernel compression that I was talking about. By default, it's gonna be gzip, which I'm pretty sure you don't need anything additional to get that working, but you do need the LZ4 that we emerged earlier in order to use LZ4. Um, let's see. And I have another video, by the way, that's just a kernel configuration, which is like half an hour long. <laughs> so if you're really interested in having like a full guide on what you can do here, 
definitely check that out. Uh, let's see. So yeah, we should only need LZ4 there. Uh, yeah, we're going to leave that. Okay, firmware, that looks good. Binary looks good. Uh, yeah, we'll do KVM. Actually, I don't think I need KVM. Actually, I think I will build this in because I think I need it for Vert Manager. And yeah, we'll do KVM for Intel since that's the processor I have. Um, these I think are default with the hardened profile. Oh, and there's some stuff I'm gonna have to change in here. I think I need to enable my NVIDIA graphics through here. Uh, I don't need Macintosh device drivers. Let's see. Yeah, so we want that. This allows you to use a VPN. Um, I don't think you need that one. I think you just need the universal ton tap. Let's see, wireless LAN, I'll leave that, even though I don't usually use Wi-Fi on my desktop. Okay, let's see, is there graphics? Graphic support. I don't want that one though. I want the proprietary NVIDIA graphics because they work better. Um, maybe it just gets emerged separately. See VirtualBox graphics card. Can't remember if I need that as a host or not. I'm not gonna include it. I think you just need that if you're doing a Gen 2 guest. Okay, so I'm actually gonna leave that. Sound card support. I think I have everything I need for my sound card. Let's see, USB sound devices. Yeah, that can always be changed later though. And again, this is, this is not something where, um, you know, if you screw it up now that you're not gonna be able to go in and fix it. You can always uh, access your kernel, do a make menu config, and change things around if necessary as your use cases change. Let's see, file systems, make sure we got support for ext4. And this is also where if you chose btrfs or something else uh, different when you were formatting, you would want to make sure that you enable support for that file system, otherwise it won't boot. Um, okay, oh, this I need to include for DaVinci Resolve. I think I need that one as well. Let's see, security options, I'll just leave those default since we're already using the hardened kernel. Kernel hacking. I'll just leave that as well. Okay. 
So we just save that to our config file. And now we can go ahead and make the kernel. So make and make modules install and make install. All right, and our kernel is compiled. So now we'll go ahead and create our initramfs. So it's gen kernel install kernel config equals and then pass it the folder where that config is. init ram fs okay so that has been created uh, you should be able to ls boot Init RAM FS and see that it's there. So you see that I have that for the same kernel that I just compiled earlier. So now let's set a host name. Let's see conf d host name. So by default, it's going to be localhost. I'm going to call that Gentoo box. And then emerge, no replace, quiet, net misc, net ifrc. And then vim into etsy, conf d, net. And, uh, oh, actually I'm getting a little bit ahead of myself. So, you have to add your network card into that. So first we wanna figure out what my network card actually is. And so this is it here, ENP0S25. Uh, this is for ethernet. Uh, you'll have to also do that for your wireless LAN if you have one of those. Uh, it's probably gonna be like WL, something like that. Uh, so, we know what that is. We can go ahead and vim back into that file. And this is the string that we're going to add. So it's config underscore ENP0S25 equals DHCP. So that, that way, you actually have DHCP. And that's just one piece of the DHCP puzzle. We have to also emerge netmisc DHCPCD. And then change directory to etsy initd and ln s net dot loopback to net enp zero s two five or 
whatever the equivalent is for your Ethernet, wireless, LAN, etc. And then we're going to add it to OpenRC so that DHCP will start at boot. All right, so now we see it's been added to run level default. So we're almost done with the base Gen 2 installation now. We have to set it up so that it can actually boot. And what I'm going to do is add the UUIDs to my FS tab. That way they can be uniquely identified. Uh, say for example, if you add a new hard drive or subtract a hard drive from your case, then things like dev SDA, dev SDB, etc., those are going to change around. Uh, but by adding the UUID to FS tab, along with the init RAM FS, we can prevent that from happening. So uh, let me gather those real quick. BLK ID S UUID O value dev SDD uh, two. Okay, so that's one of them. And I'm just going to have this over in a notepad on the side, very, very convenient when you're using a full GUI to do this. Uh, so I need the same thing for three. And for the root file system. Okay, so we're going to use those later. Uh, let's go ahead and emerge grub. All right, so Grub is installed. Uh, I should have actually mentioned that if you don't have a pre-made make.conf like I do, then there's a string that you'll want to add before emerging Grub. Uh, it's not a big deal. You can re-emerge it if you did it without. Um, so I'll just vim into that real quick. So it's this right here. Uh, this is necessary if you have an EFI system, a uh, UEFI system. If you're just using MBR, like on an older computer, then this part is not necessary, but I would assume most of you probably have newer motherboards. So yeah, you'll want to have that for installing Grub. And then additionally for us UEFI users, you want to run grub install target equals x86 underscore 64 EFI EFI directory equals boot. Next we'll do grub mk config hyphen o boot grub grub.cfg. Okay, and now we're going to edit our FS tab. So you can see everything is blanked out. So I'm just gonna add in these strings from earlier. Along with the rest of the information that they need. Um, let's see, I could probably clean this up a little bit. I like everything to line up. This isn't necessary, like it'll work the same way. Either way, it just looks prettier.
Okay, oh, we'll get rid of this. Don't need that at the end. Okay, delete this blank line. And we'll right quit that. Now for another optional step, we're going to emerge sudo so that you don't have to become a super user to do everything. All right, and I believe by default, this creates a sudoers file. Yeah, it does. So I'm going to delete that because I already have one, if you remember from the beginning. right here. So I'm just going to move that into place. Pseudoers, put that in Etsy. Okay, and that's pretty much it. Um, we're going to put a password, but another thing that I'm going to actually do is install all of the stuff for Xorg, and then I'm probably going to do a window manager as well. So that's not necessary to boot into Gentoo uh, with the TTY, obviously. That part is already set, uh, but you know, that's boring. So I'll show you how to do Xorg and Window Manager. So inside of this dependencies.txt, I believe I've got everything that I need. Let's see, X11 base, Xorg server, yeah, I've got everything in there. And then here's the drivers that I was talking about earlier for NVIDIA. That's the proprietary ones. Um, we don't need Vim, because I already installed that. And I'm not even gonna bother with the Firefox bin. Actually, it's a bin, so it's not gonna take a while to compile that. Um, let's see, VBox video. Yeah, I think everything here is good. So, I've also got this file here, installed dependencies, which, as you can see, it just allows to easily install everything that's in that dependencies.txt file. So, make that executable. And it looks like I'm gonna need, oh, okay, yeah, that's right. We did auto unmask continue. So it automatically did those license changes. And I'll pause the video while this runs cause this is definitely going to take a little while to emerge all 159. Not as long as doing the world set emerge though. Uh, this one might take maybe an hour or so. I'll let you guys know when I come back. All right, so that big emerge was finished, and it actually only took about 36 minutes. So not too bad, considering how many packages were there. So let's create a new user now, because right now I just have the root user. And then my username, Kenny. So we got that. Um, let's also create a user for root. Hmm, I wonder if it's actually going to enforce that. Oh, it actually is enforcing a longer password. 
Okay, that's fine. We'll use a more complicated one. There we go. And then we'll also set a password for that user because we just set the password for root. All right, so now they both have a password and let's see, does that create a home folder for us? It does. All right. So now I'm gonna use some more pre-prepared stuff. I'm going to be using dot files that I have backed up and I'm just going to copy these into that directory. So we'll do, actually, let's do it. I think I could just copy it directly into, okay, yeah, so I could just copy it all the way into the Kenny folder. So we'll become root real quick and copy home, Kenny, GitHub, deploy Gentoo, rice, dots, and copy everything from there into, uh, well, into here. All right, so now all of those are in place and then should be the same deal when I go into the chur root, all those files are in place. And so what these are gonna be used for uh, is just setting up certain things in the terminal like bash RC. Of course, that's going to give us our different effects and color scheme in bash. Um, X resources is actually going to be used to set the color scheme of my terminal when I install DWM. Xenit is going to be used for actually starting up X and DWM along with it. Once it's installed, of course, um, I do have to move the root bash RC to root. And I think that's the only thing that needs to get moved. And I'm also going to copy some of these over into the root folder so that I can use them when I'm root as well. So we'll copy vimrc to root. Uh, we'll copy exinitrc to root. We'll copy x resources to root. And we'll copy init vim. To root. Now to install DWM, DMenu, and SL status, I'm just going to copy my configurations from my GitHub. Uh, let's see, do I actually have Git? I don't, so I'm going to have to install that. So we'll emerge dev vcs git. It's got a few dependencies it has to install. But again, that's the beauty of setting up multiple jobs in your make.conf. That way everything can run in parallel, makes it way faster. All right, so we're all set there. And like I said, you can go ahead and just download these 
uh, or you know whatever your configurations are of DWM or whatever window manager you're going to be using. So we'll cd into root and let's see, is there already a config directory? There isn't. So I'll just make one to keep everything nice and clean. All right, so that's DWM. D menu. SL status. And I think, let's see. I think I already installed a, uh, I think I already installed a terminal. Yeah, RxBT Unicode. Okay, cool. So we can go into DWM, make clean install, D menu, make clean install. and SL status make clean install. All right, and there we go. So everything's set up. All that's left to do now is to actually boot into this and see if it works. Go ahead and exit out of the chur root and then umount dev sda4. Oh, <laughs> I was pointing to the wrong one. Umount dev std4. Let's see, target is busy. I think that's because I have it open here, right? So we'll close that. Still busy. All right, there we go. Everything's unmounted now. All right, so we're gonna boot into Gentoo. Let's see, will it focus? Probably get an Elgato or something so I can record all these parts from my other computer. That'll be a future investment. So you can see it's getting RIP addresses. All right, so we're logged in. Then we'll start X. Look at that, it's DWM. Everybody's favorite window manager. And of course we got D menu and all those nice apps that we installed. So we'll do a Firefox. That should be a good way to show that it's working, right? Because that's what everybody does with their computers anyway, is goes on the internet. So there you go, full Gentoo installation.